Thank you so much. Uh, first, we'd like to, uh, to uh, acknowledge you, like, the, the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk a little bit here of my work. Uh, since I'll have a little bit more time than I expected, and I'll talk not only about EIT and so life with open mechanics, but also on a really new and recent, recent work on growth and cooling, also with this uh, uh, um, open mechanic systems. I just wanted to stress the fact that uh, uh, this, this work was mainly done during my, my postdoc at Caltech, and I want to apologize, of course, like the, everybody that worked with me, but especially uh, uh, Amir Safaf Anini, which is a PhD student, and Jasper Chain, another PhD student, back on that. They are like they were like really good uh, and uh, really into this, this these two works. So I'll try to follow a little bit this outline more or less, but uh, the main idea is like, I, I want to talk about what is open mechanics and what is the main, uh, uh, the main goal or, or the main property of open mechanics, which is the back action force. So I will spend some time talking about, uh, about that. Then I will show you like our device, how it works, etc. And finally, I'll, I'll spend some time on EAT's low light and show the results for ground state code. So, um, Basically, when you think, we think about optics, uh, we always think about light, and the picture is not that good here, but we always think about the sun. And uh, the mechanical problems of the light, especially the sun, were already like, uh, uh, um, um, looking into by, by, even by Kepler, who said that the tails of the comets just always points away from the sun because of radiation pressure, which we know now know which is radiation pressure, because every single uh, photon carries some momentum, which then uh, uh, you can think as like a little bit of a bigger ball, which like bounces the, the tail away from the sun. And um, uh, the question is, okay, can we see this also in Mesosoft system or like a nowadays or or or, or, or regular uh, mm -hmm. system? Can we see radiation pressure effects on that? The first one, the first studies on that was done by Braginsky. He is a, was a Russian, a, a Russian guy, and he usually what what he was looking into was built a ROC circuit where the capacitance was uh, uh, a function of the position. So you have like two parallel plane capacitors, and once these guys go back and forth, change the capacitance, and therefore change the resonance frequency. And uh, we want to see the same thing on a cat, on an optical cat. So. And, but why we want to control optics or this interaction between the two? Uh, it's, the main idea is because uh, both optics and mechanics have uh, very interesting and, and, and good properties for, for not only for fundamental physics that I will show, like as ground state cooling, but also as uh, um, technological appeal. And uh, if you look at it, it's a little bit, okay. It's, if you look at it, for example, the comparison between optics and mechanics. If you look at the speed, optics is much more fast in general than mechanics. And you can transfer information by optics over a long distance. Uh, the bandwidth for one and for the other are, are, are quite different because in, in the main fact because of the, the speed or the frequency. Uh, the thermal noise, optics is resi resilient to that, while like mechanics is susceptible to thermal optics. And uh, uh, the resonance lifetime on, on optics, even on the best captives so far, is like uh, like a fraction of a nanosecond, not better than that. And on the other hand, mechanics again, because of the frequency, it gives you like a, a microsecond to second uh, 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 lifetime on, on resonance. So, and basically, what we want to do is uh, get the best from from each one of them. And to get the best from each one of them, you want you have like to to have a way to transform photons into phonons and vice versa, or or better than that, like a coherent way to, to transform photons into phonons. And um, uh, uh, I want to stress two facts here. One is like what I'll talk today is uh, uh, about E18 Solite, which basically uh, gets the advantage of a uh, 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 resonance lifetime on mechanics. And, uh, and store information on mechanics. Okay, so EAT is electromagnetic transparency, as you may know, 
And uh, when you change the reflect index of a medium or the real part, and the imaginary part also changes, and therefore you can get a, a slow light effect. And on, and on the part of the interaction, I'll try to show you, like, if I have time, the ground state cooling, which tries to, uh, uh, is the first step to, to uh, achieve this goal here, which is the green, green interaction between spins and electromagnetic uh, qubits. Why is that? Because, okay, again, the frequency that you, you work on, on uh, electromagnetic qubits is around by gigahertz. So if you can talk between gigahertz frequency to mechanics and mechanics to optics, you could have then a fine qubit, for example, on your optics channel that can talk between like two different uh, or two separate electromagnetic uh, qubits. Okay. And um, so first I'll, I'll, I'll explore a little bit about this idea of um, uh, radiation pressure, and then uh, I'll show you like our our, our system. So. The first, like, uh, uh, one of the main, main things that we think about it when we think about uh, um, radiation pressure is optical trapping. And uh, uh, the main player on that was actually uh, uh, Arthur Rashkin, which was the first one to propose that you could track atoms or, or particles or uh, small cells with uh, um, a, a optical trap. And the idea is, is quite simple. I'll just show, like, really fast, if you have like a, a Gaussian beam and uh, you just put like a, oops, sorry, a particle in the middle and if you look at just ray optics, regular ray, ray optics and if you look at, if you look at like two rays, for example A and B, the chain in momentum from A, from here to there, give you, gives you a force on this direction and the chain of momentum B gives you another force on that direction. It's just like regular ray optics change in moment. And uh, uh, the main thing here is that since you have a Gaussian beam, you have more photons hitting this side of the particle than this one. So the force like produced by this ray is larger than this one. So in the end, what you have is just like a, a uh, you can just decompose all this force into two. One is called gradient pressure and the other one is scattering uh, force. Both are like same thing or same manifestation from radiation pressure. Okay. They are, they are uh, both from the same uh, effect. You can also drive this from like looking into the uh, dipole moments. Like think about like how uh, you have like laser, it creates a dipole moment on the, on the particle. This dipole interacts with the uh, with the field, which then gives you a force. You can also it's analogous, and you can like even buy today like uh, uh, optical trapping things. Uh, for example, other scientific cells. A optical trap that you can just manipulate everything that you want. So, but let's take a look on the on the, uh, on the scale or, or the magnitude of these forces. If you just think about like a, a like a regular laser, like this one here, I think this one is like five milliwatts. Uh, it's much farther than uh, one watt, for example. But if you just like calculate what is the force that a laser can 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 make on a, a perfect mirror. You, you can just see that it's like an order of like 700 watts for a 1 watt laser. So it's, it's quite small. So like something like this, like a milliwatt laser, will give you like 70 kilometers, which is, again, quite small. So the idea is like, how we can kind of we increase this, this force on that? Yeah, if you increase the power, you can increase. For example, if you put like a, a 10 terawatt here laser, you can increase by a factor of like 10,000. So it, it is one of the ways. So the other way is like just like increasing the circulating power on a cavity, for example. So if you, you get a, like a, a regular or friend like fabric bureau cavities, which is just like two mirrors, and uh, uh, you create like a mold here in the middle, and it has like a quality factor and like a, fi a finesse, which what that, that means is that uh, the finesse give you um, uh, how many times like a photon will bounce back and forth here before it leaves, okay? And uh, the Q factor is also related to that, which is like the lifetime. It gives you the lifetime of the photons and the So if you, if you look at that, like the, for, the, the, the circulating power inside the cavity is proportional to this finance. And nowadays the cavity has, can have like even like much greater finance than that, than that. So you can boost like the circulating power by a factor of, ten, of, of three or four orders of magnitude. And then therefore like increase the, the, your, your force by four orders of magnitude. 
And I will show you the same thing for our for our device, which is it's called Nanobeam. There, the only thing that is a little bit difficult to, to, to look at finesse and like interpret that as a finesse because we don't have like two meters that back uh, bounce back and forth. But same idea for there, like we one milliwatt power, or we can have a force of about 500 nanometers. As of course, like it's good to ex to say that say that this force is applied only like a, on 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 a, a fraction of a picogram. It's not like on the, the entire meter. So so then. Okay, our optical capture, we know how it works. If you put a laser and you change the laser, the laser wavelength, you would see something like this, like a resonance. And this, the size of this resonance, or like the uh, line of this resonance, is, it gives you the quality factor. You just have to take into account not only like uh, uh, your scattering uh, losses due to like imperfection of your, but also like uh, uh, your coupling to the external. Uh, we know everything about that. But now if we put like a spring on the end, what will happen? So that's the question, like if I shine a laser on a given, a given wavelength and put a spring there and start to, to move back and forth, you'll see something that you already expect to, to happen. A fixed uh, laser, you uh, bounce back and forth, you change the, the, the size of this cavity, the resonance frequency changes, and therefore the, uh, the amplitude of the laser that's coming to this detector is changed. It's a regular... Uh, 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 Modulator, amplitude modulator. Okay. So, but now uh, I already told you that we we actually have photons inside the cat, and if this this mirror is sufficiently small, these photons in the cat will actually bounce back and forth and produce a force on this mirror, and then change uh, uh, the, the the resonance condition of this cat. So if again, to just have a force, it will just like a fresh press this, uh, this mirror and make like uh, the size change. Other than that, you also have uh, temperature noise or thermal noise. So everything is in a fine temperature. So you have like thermal fluctuation from the environment, which then makes this, uh, this cavity bounce back and forth, or, or jitters, I would say. So I will not tell, I will not talk about one of, I'm just not talking about one of the effects, not the two. There's one of the effects, as you, you may expect, like you have like an average photon number, which uh, just shift this, this cavity to, to uh, a, a, um, another um, position and change the, the overall uh, wavelength. So that's like, a, is the, uh, uh, it's just a tuning by the, the, uh, uh, the optical force. But now what I wanted to show is that actually, if you, after you, you are in a stable position, if you add like a thermal noise, let's say like a sinusoidal noise, what will happen? So once you have this thermal noise, it will change the frequency as you expect, and, will change, will, uh, and this will change the field amplitude. Okay? Just because your uh, I don't know if I put it there. No. Just because the field amplitude it depends on 